Jacob Burton here from StellaCulinary.com. And in this culinary q and I have a question from a viewer about his dough collapsing uh, during the bread baking process. So Jeffrey S. writes, I've been messing around with different places to rise the dough. At the restaurant for family meal, I'll rest it over a steam table covered in a hotel pan. At home, I will cover it in Tupperware and sit it on the oven while I am baking something. Both applications seem to work all right, but I don't really understand the process or know if my approach is wrong. Sometimes the dough will rise beautifully, and others it will sink as soon as I pull some dough out to work with it. Thanks, Jeffrey. Well, Jeffrey, in short, what's happening is you are over-fermenting your dough. Your uh, yeast is becoming too active. So in the 12 steps of the bread baking process, two of those steps are fermentation steps. Now, if you want some more in-depth information, I actually have a, an hour-long audio lecture, uh, SCS episode 19. Click right here. It'll take you to the audio download page. Uh, it's a free podcast that I did on the 12 steps of bread baking. So if you want to get more in-depth, you can listen to all 12 here. But two of those steps are the bulk fermentation process and the secondary fermentation process, also known as proofing. So when you mix all of your ingredients together, the second that you add yeast to your bread dough mixture, your bulk fermentation begins. And what's happening is the yeast is consuming the starches uh, in the flour and it's converting them to carbon dioxide, CO2 gas, and alcohol. Those are the two byproducts that yeast produce. Now, it's the CO2 gas that allows your bread to rise. Uh, and it's also what gives your, you know, those nice springy loaves. Without the CO2 produced by the yeast, uh, your breads would be uh, extremely flat and uh, they wouldn't have that nice airy crumb or interior texture. So what's occurring, though, is yeasts are living cultures. They're, they're living creatures, right? They are, are actively consuming and producing a byproduct that the baker harnesses uh, to leaven his or her bread. Now, the activity level of the yeast is directly related to the ambient temperature of the room or the environment in which it is in. So you're talking about placing your bulk fermentation dough on a uh, stove top, which is a fairly warm surface, or over a steam table, and the steam will create a, an extremely warm surface. So what's happening is the yeast is hyperactivating uh, and it's consuming all the nutrients uh, within the dough, within the flour, uh, which is causing the dough to overproof. And then when you go and touch it, when you go to uh, degas and punch it down, uh, what's happening is the dough is collapsing. So anytime you have your dough and it rises and you put, go to pr uh, press on it and it collapses on you, that's a, a telltale sign that you have over fermented the dough. Now the same thing happens in the secondary fermentation process, which occurs after you degas the dough and you portion the, the dough into individual loaves of bread, you form it and you allow it to proof. What happens is if it overproofs during that second rising, when you go to uh, transfer the dough uh, onto a sheet tray to bake it, or if you just you know, use a, a razor blade or a paring knife to score the top of your dough, which we also call, call docking, when that scoring occurs, if the dough starts to collapse in on itself, then it, you know that you have overproofed your dough. Now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind to help you solve this issue is for every 17 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, the ambient temperature of the dough rises, the yeast activity will double. So if you are proofing your bread in a 70 degree Fahrenheit room uh, and it takes two hours for that bread dough to proof, if you raise the temperature in that room to 87 degrees Fahrenheit, it will only take an hour for that bread dough to proof. Now, when I write a lot of my bread recipes, and I, I think this is true for a lot of people out there, a lot of uh, professional chefs or bakers who write bread recipes, we're normally going to assume that your, your room temperature in your kitchen is around 72 degrees Fahrenheit uh, upwards to uh, 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's kind of the area in which we are basing our test recipes on. So, but you'll notice though, that because everyone's kitchen environment is different, you always have two uh, milestones or cues given to you in a recipe. One is a time relative cue, and the other is a visual cue. So in a lot of bread recipes, you'll see them say something like, mix all the ingredients in the dough together uh, and allow to bulk ferment for two hours, time cue, or until doubled uh, in its original volume, and that's your visual cue. Same thing, you know, roast at 325 for one hour or until a uh, dark golden brown, right? So they're giving you that visual cue because if it goes past a dark golden brown, then it's burnt, right? So I would start to pay attention to the visual cues of the bread that the bread is giving you 
if it's rising too quickly, uh, you want to go ahead and place that in a cooler environment. And you can even go as cold as your refrigerator, which is called retarding the dough. And it's going to slow down uh, the yeast activation or the, or the fermentation that's going on. And also, a, a, another thing to keep in mind is the slower it takes for your dough to rise or to bulk ferment or proof, the more complex and depth of flavor that bread will achieve. So really, for flavorful bread, you don't want your dough to rise any quicker during the bulk fermentation than one hour, or than two hours, and any faster during the proofing stage than one hour. So keep those in mind. The temperature of your room is too hot. Uh, your dough is rising too quickly, and that is why you are it is collapsing on you. And again. If you want to go in depth into uh, the 12 steps of the bread baking process, which is really going to help you troubleshoot uh, things like this, uh, listen to the SES episode 19 audio podcast on the 12 steps of bread baking. If you have a culinary question of your own, shoot me an email, jacob at stellaculinary.com, or you can Twitter me, J uh, at Chef Jacob.